Okay, another telephoto lens showdown. This time it's exclusively Z mount. I'm going to be talking today about this, the new Nikon 600mm f6.3 that's just come out. And I'm going to be comparing it to this guy, which is my 400mm f4.5, which I have been using with the 1.4 times teleconverter on here as my main wildlife setup for just over a year now. But I also need to talk about another lens today, and that has got an incredibly useful feature that neither this nor the new 600 have, and it sounds a bit like this. months ago when the rumours of this 600mm first started appearing online, I was honestly sceptical as to whether I was really going to be bothered even to look at it, to test it, considering how good this 4.5 400mm has been. What I felt I was lacking more was reach for skittish wildlife or small birds and things. So actually, around the time of the 600mm f6.3 announcement, I pretty much decided that I was going to pick up an 800mm PF f6.3 lens to try it out. And in fact, I had gone ahead and ordered one, a second-hand one, online. And that was the very night before the 600mm f6.3 was announced. But in the early hours of the next morning, when I was awake because my daughter had been awake for a little bit, I'd come down, settled her, and I was sitting up awake, sitting in bed, I started looking at the early release information, the announcement information on this 600mm f6.3. And I thought, Bloody hell, I'm best trying that out. I want to see what that's like. It was small, it was sharp, it was lightweight compared to that 800, and uh, all the reviews seemed to point to it being absolutely fantastic. And it had a gold ring, which, uh, you know, I'm joking really, but yeah, maybe it matters. So within 12 hours of my placing my uh, order for the used 800mm, I'd cancelled it again. Sorry, Mifsud's Photographic. I thoroughly recommend them on eBay, by the way. I've bought things from them before. Um, they were great. They just uh, gave my money back. Um, yeah, and I pre-ordered the 600mm. So this video should have been a pretty straightforward comparison of the 600mm and this 400mm f4.5 with the teleconverters. And indeed, the 600mm arrived with me very soon afterwards, because I think I was very early in the pre-orders list, which of course is an advantage of being woken up in the early hours by a toddler. There's got to be some, right? But as I hinted at earlier, that's not the whole story, because there's also this. And in my notes, right now I've written, bring forth the beast. Here is a really big 400mm lens that isn't very heavy. Yep, this is the Z 400mm f2.8 with the built-in teleconverter. If you remember my comparison video of the big heavy 400mm, the 500mm PF f-mount lens and the small 400, you'll remember that I said in that that this is something I really wanted to try out, get my hands on sometime. Now I tried to hire one of these several times over the last year on times when I had projects that uh, could have used it, but I failed every time because I guess they're really popular. People uh, want to use them. And honestly, I did not expect that I would get anywhere near one of these for another year at least. But then, literally two days before the 600mm lens was supposed to ship, there it is, an available 400mm f2.8 TC VRS lens that I could just about afford. And I thought, well, that opportunity is not going to come up again. I'm going to have to go for it. And uh, yeah, 
two days after the 600 millimeter arrived, this arrived too. So now it's going to be a bit more of a, a wider comparison between the three lenses, the two 400s and the new 600 millimeter with and without teleconverters, be it internal or external. And at the end of it all, I'll tell you which ones I'm keeping and why, because I sure as heck can't keep all of them. That I can't afford that. So let's start by talking about the 600 millimeter lens. It's not here, but if I hold up my 400 4.5 as a prop, I can tell you that the 600 is a little bit fatter along the body, but it came to the same at the end. In fact, the lens hoods are interchangeable. They're the same part number. The feet are also interchangeable, which is nice. So I was able to put Arca foot on it straight away, which is always good. And in terms of length, it's about 28 centimeters, excluding the hood, which is not far off the same as this guy with a teleconverter plus a little bit. It's a little bit longer. It weighs 1.47 kilos, which turns out to be pretty much exactly the same as this 400 4.5 with the 1.4 times teleconverter. Talking of teleconverters, if you stick a 1.4 times teleconverter on the 600 millimeter f6.3, you end up with an 840 millimeter f9 lens. And if you really go for it and you stick the two times teleconverter on, which absolutely works, you end up at 1200 millimeters at f13. The other thing to note about the, the 600 millimeter lens is it is a phase Fresnel lens, a bit like the 500 PF and the 800 millimeter PF, the Z lens that uh, had been released a little while ago. But unlike this 400 millimeter 4.5, which we'll talk about next, this is not a PF lens, but it's still very small and light because of whatever optical formula they've managed to achieve in it. So this one, is 1.25 kilos. It's both slightly smaller and slightly lighter than the Z 70 to 200 f 2.8. And yeah, it takes the 1.4 times teleconverter very nicely, making it a 560 millimeter f 6.3. So pretty similar to 600 6.3. That's in terms of uh, the reach and the aperture at least. And yet you can also stick a two times teleconverter on it and then you end up at f9 and 800 millimeters. And then the big guy, the 400 millimeter f2.8 TC lens. It weighs remarkably little for what it is. It's only 2.95 kilos. But just because it's lighter than other big 400 millimeters in the past doesn't mean it's smaller. It's kind of the same size. It is front to back 38 centimeters, so a whole 10 centimeters longer than the 600. And that's excluding this great big lens hood, which I'd want to keep on here to protect that massive front element. One of the major selling points of this lens over any other 400 millimeter f2.8, I think in the world, is that it has this. This is an inbuilt 1.4 times teleconverter, and I can put it in or remove it just like that. I don't have to stop video recording. I don't have to stop looking through the camera at my subject. So I can change between a 400 millimeter f2.8 and a 560 millimeter f4 as simply as going clunk like that. You can also Put the two times teleconverter on this, at which point you get an 800 millimeter f5.6. And with the 800 millimeter f5.6, with that two times on there, you can still engage the internal uh, teleconverter as well. So then you're stacking teleconverters and you get to a whopping 1,120 millimeters. And it's still only at f8, which is a perfectly workable aperture. I should just say about the teleconverter that's in here, it is part of the lens. So the quality you get out of the internal teleconverter should far surpass what you would get by putting an external 1.4 times. And let's face it, the Z teleconverters are already pretty darn good. That's the lenses introduced. While I had all three lenses in hand, I wanted to do four different specific tests. The first one 
autofocus speed. The second, the vibration reduction and how low a shutter speed I could reasonably handhold each lens at. Third, background rendering. And finally, image sharpness. First though, it's probably time for a disclaimer. Individual lenses are different. The tests were done by me with my often suboptimal technique. And they were done on one particular day. And in some of them, there was natural light at play, which obviously does change, even if subtly, and it does change pretty much all the time a little bit. But the main point to take away is that I tried to keep things consistent between the tests. At the very least, the tests that I do should be comparable to each other. But as always, your mileage may vary. I should say I was very pleased to note that the tests involving the 400mm f4.5 were really quite well in line with the same test that I did with that lens for the video I did when that came out. So at least I'm consistent. So the pixel peeping that follows in some of these tests is extreme. I had to go to 200% a lot of the time to really tease out the differences. So really what I'm saying is that all three of these lenses are phenomenal and they work beautifully with the teleconverters and any of them would be fantastic to use. But the point of doing this test and indeed this video is to really get down to it and actually see which is better and by how much. And hey, we like this kind of content. You seem to like this kind of content. I like watching it too. So let's just go for it. With all these tests where I put results up on the screen, feel free to pause and have a closer look because some of the graphs, there's quite a lot on them and I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything that I put up. And I'm also gonna put chapter links in the description of this video so you can skip back and forwards to whichever tests interest you most. So for the autofocus tests, I did exactly the same test as I did in the last testing video where I set the lenses up on a tripod, looking out the window at a car a couple of streets away, and I manually pulled focus back to the minimum focus position and then pressed the AF on button with the focus set to a single point that I already knew was on the front grille of the car and let the focus rack all the way to that well, I recorded the back screen of the camera and I did that three times for each lens and teleconverter combination. And then I took all those little video clips into Premiere Pro and measured how long it was from the first frame that the autofocus system was live and moving to the first frame where the little focus lock indicator turned from red to green. The reason I like this test is because it simulates the kind of worst case scenario where the lens has lost focus on your subject and it's hunting all the way backwards and forwards through its range trying to reacquire it. Unsurprisingly, the big 400mm f2.8 is the fastest to focus here by quite a bit. And next is the new 600mm f6.3. The new 600 is about 7% faster to focus throughout that whole range than the 400mm f4.5, while the big 400 is about 20% faster. Once you engage the teleconverter on the big 400mm, then the speed is about the same as the 400mm f4.5 with no teleconverters, so still really pretty fast. The 400mm f4.5 only loses about 7% of its focusing speed when you put the one4 times teleconverter on it, which is pretty impressive, actually. Well, the 600mm suffers a bit more when you put the teleconverter on, and its autofocusing speed is literally half what it was before putting on the one4 times teleconverter. And in fact, that combination is now considerably slower than the 400mm f4.5 with the one4 times teleconverter. Adding the two times teleconverter slows things down quite a lot, with the 400mm f4.5 being around three times slower to focus and the 600 being about four times slower to focus respectively. Adding a two times teleconverter to the big 400mm f2.8 approximately doubles its focusing time, but that is still faster than the 600mm f6.3 with the 1.4 times and considerably faster than either of the small primes with the two times. If I put the two times and the internal 1.4 times on the big 400, that finally brings the monster to its knees and it's really slow. Locking focus takes about 6.5 times longer than the bare lens, but it does focus and it would be usable. 
just probably not on moving subjects. Next, I wanted to test the vibration reduction system. The way I did this was the same as last time. There's a lovely painted slate on a shed outside that Jess painted, and I stood a fixed distance away from that with each lens, and I took bursts of photos handheld at successively slower and slower shutter speeds. And then I brought them all into Lightroom and I counted through them to see what percentage of them were acceptably sharp. Now, of course, that's subjective, but it does give a way of comparing the different lenses and uh, the different shutter speeds. I grouped the results into brackets by focal length. So I compared the two 400 millimeters lenses at 400 millimeters and then the two 400s with their 1.4 times converters versus the 600 and then the 600 with a 1.4 to be 840 and the two 400s with their two times to be 800 millimeters. I'll put the graphs up on the screen now while I talk through them and uh, of course as I said before feel free to pause and look at the numbers more closely at any point you want to. For the two 400 millimeter lenses, I was able to get sharp images down to a hundredth of a second, no problem at all. After which there was a slight drop off with the smaller 400 millimeter f4.5 being predictably a little easier to handhold because it's so much smaller and so much lighter. That said, I was still getting 10% of images sharp hand holding the big 400mm f2.8 at a tenth of a second. At 560mm and 600mm respectively, so that's the 600mm PF and the 400mm lenses with 1.4 times teleconverters engaged, you see a similar trend where I'm getting pretty much everything sharp down to a 200th of a second. And then once we go down to a hundredth of a second, I'm getting more than 90% on the two small primes and I'm getting 100% still on the big uh, f2.8. Going down through the shutter speeds, the, the two small lenses, the 600 6.3 and the 400 4.5 with the 1.4 times teleconverter, pretty similar, a sort of steady drop off as you get down to 1 25th of a second. And then down a tenth of a second, the 600 is still giving me about 10%, 12% of sharp images, but I was actually really struggling to get sharp images with the 400, 4.5 and the 1.4 times converter, which is similar to last time actually, I really struggled to get that to work at really low shutter speeds. The big 400 millimeter, meanwhile, is outclassing these other lenses down at these low shutter speeds by quite a bit. And I was getting nearly double the keepers with the big 400 with its internal teleconverter at a 25th of a second and slightly more than the 600 at a tenth of a second, which is astonishing. Looking at the 800 millimeter and 840 millimeter combinations, it's a similar story down to a 200th of a second with the 600 6.3 dropping slightly more images than the other two. Then there was the expected drop off as we go down through the progressively lower shutter speeds of all three, losing more and more as we come down. This time the 400 4.5 with the two times seemed to be doing slightly better than the 600 with the 1.4, interestingly. And again, the 400 2.8 with the two times teleconverter was doing absolutely fine and in fact got the largest percentage of keepers at a 25th of a second, which again, amazing. At a tenth of a second, all three struggled and hey, that's fair enough. I think if I was shooting something at 800, 840 millimeters at a tenth of a second, I'd probably find something to brace myself against or get a tripod or a monopod out because that's starting to get into ridiculous levels. But it's cool to know that it's not zero. Now the new 600mm does seem to be a little behind in these tests and I figure that it's really the same level of stabilisation as the 4.5 but in every case it is a slightly longer focal length. So 600 versus 560 or 840 versus 800 and 
that little bit of focal length might make all the difference in that when you're looking at that image, when you're trying to stabilize that image, a given amount of wobble of me holding the lens is going to be amplified that little bit more on that longer focal length. So that's why I think the 600 looks a little bit behind. I don't think it really is. I think all of these have absolutely phenomenal VR. So I didn't test the big 400 2.8 with stacked two times and internal 1.4 times teleconverters because I feel I would be unlikely to handhold anything at over a thousand millimeters. And if I was going to shoot that combination, I would definitely have some support. So I feel that's a good segue to talk about supports. It's important to have supports for your long telephoto gear because if you want to keep trained on a specific place waiting for something to happen for a long time or if you're doing video you kind of need something to support the lens more than just hand holding if you're doing it for any length of time. So let's look at what supports I use down here. This is my big Gitzo 3 series tripod. This is the one I've been using for all the lens tests so far, apart from the hand-holding one, obviously. And on it, I've got my flex shooter ball head, which is a kind of hybrid, somewhere between a ball head and a gimbal, or, or a, a sort of stabilized two axis head anyway. It's not really a gimbal. Um, talk about that another time. And yeah, this is absolutely solid, quite heavy. I've also got this much lighter, a uh, travel tripod from KF Concept. There will actually be a review of this coming fairly soon, just need to edit it. Um, it's quite light, one of its legs comes off as a monopod, it's got an Swiss compatible ball head, it's grand with the small uh, 400 4.5, it probably isn't up to it with the big 400 2.8. What's well, got a monopod? Now a monopod is great for a big lens like the 400 2.8 which I can hand hold, but I don't want to all the time. So I've got a head on the top of it here. It's quick release. The reason that it's good that it's quick release is because I can be using the lens on this monopod. And then if something exciting happens and I want to hand hold the lens to maybe track something flying, quick release, drop the monopod, done. Also, just recently made myself a ground pod for getting really low to the ground. It's got a, a little clip on here and I can put the same, I can take the head off my monopod and I can put it on this ground pod. So I can use that. <laughs> Haven't tried it yet, but I'm kind of looking forward to doing so soon. And finally, a bean bag. Great for putting on, like uh, shooting out the window of the car. Put it on the, on the door like that with the window open or just on the ground like that in a hide. You can even put it that way up and sort of nestle the lens in that V shape. Very versatile bit of kit. Um, so yeah, all different options for supporting the lens if I'm not hand holding it. Now, back to the main content of this video. So for testing the background rendering and background blurring on these lenses, um, my daughter selected her squirrel toy to be the subject for it. So we put him up in a tree in the garden where there was a really nice leafy, busy background behind to really test how these lenses control a busy, annoying background. And you can see here that is quite busy around there around the back. The light was fairly poor by the time I did this, so there is some noise in the images, but Please ignore that. These are not processed in any way. Didn't want to influence it by processing. And we should be able to look at the background rendering without really bothering too much about that noise. So let's look at the 400 millimeter options first. It's pretty clear that there is more background distraction in the image from the 400 millimeter f4.5 compared to the f2.8, which absolutely obliterates the background. That's why you have an f2.8 lens after all. What's interesting though, is that when you set the big 400 millimeter to 4.5 as well, it still renders the background a little better than the 400 millimeter f4.5, especially if you look towards the edges of the image. Stopping both lenses down to f8, the backgrounds become pretty much indistinguishable. Comparing the 560mm and 600mm options, at f4, the, the big 400mm with its inbuilt 1.4x teleconverter predictably 
has the best background rendering. Once it's stopped down to 6.3, it's still a touch nicer than the 4.5 with the 1.4 times teleconverter, but at this point it's marginal. And the 600 millimeter PF is a little nicer than the 400 4.5 with the teleconverter, probably on a par with the big 400 plus its teleconverter. As before, if you stop them down a lot more, so take them all to F8, F9, F11, then the differences become marginal to the point of being irrelevant. At 800 millimeters, there's a similar story. The 400 millimeter 2.8 with the two times teleconverter is 5.6, whereas the other two are at F9 here, and it's quite clear that the big 400 has the better background rendering. This is not a surprise. Stop down to the equivalent F9, it's now very similar to the 600 millimeter with the 1.4 times. They are pretty similar, and unfortunately the quality of the 400 millimeter F4.5 with the two times converter is a little bit behind. So now to the real pixel peeping, the image sharpness tests. And as I said before, in order to really see anything worth seeing here, I had to go to 200% because these lenses are all phenomenally sharp. So to test the image sharpness, I used a printed map. In fact, it's a map of the old house in Finland where my grandfather grew up. And I set that up on a clipboard with uh, a loom cube light shining on it and a reflector to bring in some light from the window to kind of absolutely maximize the light on that so I could do that test indoors because the weather was pretty disgustingly windy and I didn't think my map would stay still. And again, all these images are totally unprocessed. I've done nothing to them at all except bring them in Lightroom, zoom into them. First, let's look at the two 400mm lenses. The big 400mm f2.8 is already noticeably sharper wide open than the 400 millimeter f4.5 and when you stop the big lens down to 4.5 it only increases the difference. The 400 millimeter f4.5 is a very sharp lens but the big 400 2.8 uh, TC lens is in a different league. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's a different class of lens. At f5.6 the gap closes a little and by the time they're both stopped down to f6.3 they're pretty much the same. Looking at the 560mm, 600mm bracket, wide open, the big 400mm with its internal teleconverter is sharper than the small 400 with the external teleconverter by a good margin. There's a loss of both detail and contrast. The 600 has less contrast than the big 400 with its teleconverter, but the detail is pretty good and it's a lot better than the small 400 with teleconverter. With all these lenses at 6.3, the big 400 is well ahead of both the smaller lenses. It's much closer once you get to f8 but the small 400 millimeter is still well behind and at f11 the 600 millimeter and big 400 millimeter with the teleconverter are pretty similar but the big lens still has better contrast and the 400 4.5 really never catches up. Now I've already talked about being able to stack teleconverters with the big 400 millimeter f2.8 with its internal one and the two times on the outside. You can also use the 1.4 times external teleconverter the big 400. So I wondered just how much better is that internal teleconverter? Comparing the internal teleconverter of the 400mm f2.8 with the external 1.4 times Z teleconverter, it's definitely a little sharper and with better contrast using the internal converter when looking at the image 200%. Once the lenses are stopped down to f5.6, the differences are marginal. It means that using the external 1.4 times teleconverter is a real option if the shooting conditions call for having 560 or 784 millimeters respectively, whether I engage the internal teleconverter or not. Not something I'm likely to do often, but it is cool to know that the option exists. So looking at the 800mm and 840mm options now, similar to before, the big 400 is well ahead of both the small 400 with the 2 times converter and the 600 with the 1.4. The 600 and 1.4 times is definitely better than the small 400 with the 2 times. The thing is really noticeable isn't so much the text, but the details in the texture of the paper. At f11, the gap is closed, but still the big 400 wins, and the 600 is better than the small 400. Amazingly, even though the big 400mm with the internal and external 1.4 times teleconverters is definitely softer than the same lens with just the two times, that 
double 1.4 times teleconverter combination is still sharper than the 600 millimeter 6.3 with the 1.4 times teleconverter on it, which is astonishing. So looking at the really big focal lengths now, the 1,120 millimeters or 1,200 millimeters for the 600 with the two times converter. Again, the big 400, even with the two times teleconverter and the internal 1.4, is still sharper and more contrasty than the 600 with the two times. But that gap is starting to close at these extreme focal lengths. But what you've got to remember is that that's with the big prime at f8, while the 600 6.3 with the two times converter wide open is f13. So, what are my conclusions? The new 600 millimeter is fantastic. It's very nice to use and the ergonomics are great. It felt really good shooting with it on the Z9. It felt really nice to track subjects and the autofocus felt really fast. And of course the tests have shown that it is really fast. I actually liked the fact that it felt sort of a bit more substantial in the hand than my 400 millimeter f4.5. Compared to Big 400 2.8, the 600 stands up surprisingly well to it. It's only a hair behind in terms of image quality. Of course, it lets in less light and its autofocus isn't quite that fast, but it's still really a very, very impressive offering. When it was first released, there was a lot of people sort of bickering a little bit that it was f6.3 rather than f5.6, like the 500mm PF lens, the F-mount lens, for which it is a natural replacement. I really don't think that that difference of a third of a stop is going to stand up to the fact that it has 100 millimeters more reach, its autofocus is faster based on how it compared to the 400 uh, 4.5 and the test that I did with that lens versus the 500 PF, I can tell you the 600 millimeter is sharper. So I feel overall it is a very worthy successor to the 500mm PF. I don't see the 600mm 6.3 being as popular as that. It is quite expensive. There are already other lightweight telephoto options for the Z mount and of course there are the F mount lenses that convert absolutely beautifully. You can pick up a 500 PF with a FTZ adapter for half the price of the 600. So yeah, the 400mm 2.8, it really is amazing. The rendering is beautiful, the autofocus is lightning fast, and it's surprisingly hand-holdable, even down to low shutter speeds, as we've demonstrated. This teleconverter being built in here is absolutely magic. The ability to swap from 400 to 560 in the field in any weather instantly absolutely fantastic imagine taking photos of a bird sitting on a perch you might engage the teleconverter to get nice and close in the bird takes off you want a bit more leeway to keep the bird in frame while it's flying switch it to 400 millimeters instantly without taking your eye off the subject that's what that's for, and it's it's great. I'm not. I've only been using it for a couple of weeks, but I'm very sold on that feature. The lens also has another function that the other two don't have, and that's this extra function ring here, that kind of it's in a spring loaded and it can move a tiny bit clockwise or a tiny bit counterclockwise, and then it pings back into place. And I've set that to set or recall autofocus um, position, a set focus position. There's a button for doing that down here, and then I can press these little sidey buttons on the lens to do that, but they are inconvenient to do, whereas this is really easy. And it means that I can use that feature much more easily when I'm out photographing, which is brilliant. Having praised it heavily, I should point out there is one thing that I have about this which is a bit of a gripe, and that is that the focusing ring here, the manual focus ring, is too far back on the body of the lens. The centre of balance of this lot, with the Z9 on it, I should put the Z9 on, shouldn't I? Imagine it's here. I kind of start, I kind of hold the lens like this. My thumb has to do a lot of reaching back to get the focus ring. If it was right here, or if I could use the extra 
whatever whatever Nikon call this extra function ring that I've just hidden under the neoprene there because I don't use it. If I could use that as a focus ring, that'd be great. Problem solved. Or if the focus ring was further forward, that'd be great too. But it is where it is. And basically, I suspect it's a muscle memory thing. Once I've learned that I have to kind of articulate my thumb back a bit to do it, I'll get on a bit better than that. But I kind of have found trying to switch into manual focus quickly. I'm kind of like waving my thumb around trying to find the focus ring, which is quite a, kind of annoying. It's obviously bigger and heavier than the uh, 400 4.5 by really quite a margin. But it is a lot lighter than the great big 400 2.8G VR lens, the F-mount lens that I had before, that was just unmanageably heavy. This is the same as my old 300 2.8, which I could definitely handhold and walk around with for a day. I carried it up mountains to go look for the mountain hairs and things, and it was absolutely fine. So I feel that this is going to be much more manageable than uh, than that old big 400, which I just had to get rid of because I couldn't, I just couldn't really use it. Finally, even used or heavily discounted, this is still an eye-wateringly expensive lens. But in the few weeks I've had to play with it and try it out, can kind of understand why it just delivers. So yeah, if you haven't worked it out from the fact that it isn't here, yes, I decided to return the 600mm f6.3 and for now I'm keeping the two 400s. Why keep both? This big 400 is great for hide work or specific wildlife photography adventures, situations. If I'm going out to do wildlife photography, I'm more than happy to take that with me. It even fits in my Gitzo adventure backpack with the hood turned round, but with the body on it, just. If it was a centimetre longer, it would not fit in my rucksack and I would have been a bit sad, but it just about gets in there, which is great. But I also need a walkabout casual carry around lens for if I'm just going somewhere for a walk and I think there might be wildlife or I'm going somewhere with the family it's not going to be appropriate to lug that thing around with me so I need something small and light like this and I've been using this with a teleconverter as my main wildlife setup for over a year now and it's really delivered it's absolutely phenomenal at Burkett so while with its with the 1.4 times teleconverter, when we're talking in the 560, 600 um, sphere, this is the weakest lens of the three that I've tested here today. It is still an absolutely phenomenal bit of kit. And I've got no problem with going out for a day and using this, as I've got so many good images from it. I mean, in the ideal world, I might have kept the 600, 6.3, but this big guy, cost me all of my available budget for now and sometime into the future. So given that the 600mm is also a really rather expensive lens and the used value that I could get for this is well less than half of it, there wasn't really the option to keep the 600. Anyway, as I said before, all of these lenses in this video are absolutely phenomenal. I feel incredibly privileged to be able to shoot with any of them. Right, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope it's been useful to you. If it has, please like it, leave a comment, tell me what you think, tell me if you've tried some of these combinations out, what you think of them. Um, if you enjoy the content or you would like to see some future videos where I go out in the field and take wildlife photos with these guys, then please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And yeah, I'm going to finish the video by tagging on a bunch of images and video footage taken with the three lenses compared here today with various teleconverter combinations. And yeah, I will see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.